Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, GammaCert, a NIR spectroscopy-based solution as a non-destructive method for rapid, accurate, and affordable method for cannabis potency analysis. Presented by Dr. Rani Atali, Vice President of Research and Compliance, GammaCert. My name is Xavier Gutierrez, and I will be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots. LabRoots is the leading scientific social networking website and producer of educational virtual events and webinars. Now, before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want during the presentation. Simply click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen and type your questions into the drop-down box. Our speaker will respond to your questions via email following the presentation. And if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Ask a Question box to let us know that you're experiencing a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located in the top right corner of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. Now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Itali. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you, LabRoots, for inviting me to speak today. And thank you to GammaCert for letting me speak today and share these slides with you today. So today, uh, I would like to talk to you about potency testing and why potency testing is so important and how we solve several problems in potency testing. So what makes potency, cannabis potency testing so important? Well, first of all, potency is critical for ensuring safe and optimal use of cannabis, which means that especially a medical user really needs to know what he is consuming. And if I would like to buy my own cannabis flower, I need to know exactly what's in it and what I'm intaking. Also today, growers must, grow, um, must send out their, their grow for testing, which means that if I'm a grower and I would I grow a few kilos, I need to send out a few flowers every time for potency testing, and that's how I mark the potency of my batch. Now, actual, the actual monetary value of these flowers are, in fact, um, set by the actual THC and CBD that the labs give back as a result for these growers. So for these reasons, accurate labeling in cannabis is a must. So just a small, um, um, uh, short little uh, 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 quote by Green Camp News from September 12, 2018. So labeling cannabis product correctly is a huge importance, especially on the medical side of the cannabis industry, which is why mislabeling these products can cause great harm to users. So what is the biggest problem in potency testing? The biggest problem in potency testing is actually mislabeling. Well, since California, has required testing for the growers, nearly 20% of cannabis products have failed, which means they have failed the plus minus 10% accuracy between what is written on the label of the box and flowers actually inside. In the first few months of testing, 11,000 flowers were tested and 2,000 of, 2, of them failed. Some experts believe that the differences between the labeling of the flowers and what's actually inside the box could be a difference of even up to 75% and even more. Such extreme irregularities are unacceptable, unsafe, and will, and will inevitably risk the growth of the industry as regulated oversight intensifies. So how is potency testing done today? Well, today potency testing is done in the labs using HPLC. And as I said before, their growers are required to send out a few grams of their grow each time and send it out to the lab. And in the HPLC, technicians run these samples and send out their THC and CBD or other cannabinoids and terpenes back to the labs. Before GC used to be used as well, but today we know that GC is a bit less accurate because the GC does not distinguish between um, the carboxylated cannabinoids and the non-carboxylated cannabinoids. So for this reason, today, um, most of the labs go to HPLC testing. So what are the challenges that the industry face with potency testing and with using HPLC? Well, first of all, the most, the most problematic problem of HPLC is that HPLC um, uh, testing is effective for a single flower accuracy and not necessarily for the whole batch. You must understand that when HPLC is done for these flowers, these flowers are extracted, grinded up, extracted, and destroyed. So the fl same flower that was analyzed 
is not actually the same flour that is later sold to the, to the customers. And this is quite problematic. Why is this so problematic? Because cannabis has um, very low homogeneity, or it's called a heterogeneous species. Because na nature in affects the way that the cannabis is grown, there's large non-homogeneity between the same flowers from the same plant, from the same grow, even in the same bag or in the same container. So this is problematic because if we send out a few flowers, it could be that the flowers next to them are completely different than the one that were sent out for analyzing. So what you see in this slide is over 2,500 samples which were plotted for their cannabinoid content by percent of sample weight. And what you see here is total CBD or total THC of these samples or both. Now in blue, you see total CBD and in green, you see total THC. Now these samples, these 2,500 samples were divided into their strains, which is what you see in our X axis. Let's look for instance at this strain. We can see that this strain was, it's the same strain, which was measured from different boxes from a, a certain grower. You can see that the same strain gives flowers anywhere between seven and 28%, which means that there's a huge difference between the different flowers inside the same, from the, which were um, taken out from the same plant and were, were in the same bag or in the same container. That means that when a patient wants to um, use one flower, consume one flower, he can actually double dose what he actually thinks that he's taking. So why is this happening? Because simply, because cannabis is a plant, it's not a, a pill or a capsule, which is done in a pharma company. It's a plant and environmental, and environmental conditions affect the growth of the plant. And we can actually compare it to grapes. Expecting all buds within a container to be of the same potency is like expecting grapes within the bag to be the same ripeness. We know that when we want to eat some grapes, one grape can be a little bit sweeter and the other can be a, a little less sweeter. This is because the sugar content is not evenly distributed among the among the, uh, the grapes, which is what happens exactly with the cannabis. The cannabinoids are not evenly distributed within the flower buds from the same plant, from the same grow, in the same strain, or um, from different grows. But all over the plant, it depends how, how close the sun is and other environmental effects affect the potency and the spread of the molecules along the plants. So again, this is problematic because if I send out one flower, this can be a completely different flower than the flower that I, that I later sell. So what is a way that we could possibly be, uh, get labeling to be um, a, a bit more accurate? Well, one way we can do that is actually batch more and send out more, send out more for uh, testing. But the problem with this is that testing with HPLC in the labs takes a long time and is very expensive. And if we send more and more samples out, we destroy our growth. So this is quite problematic. Another way to maybe get better accurate and more accurate labeling is to homogenize our cannabis. Maybe take a few plants, a few flowers, and homogenize them together and send them out to the labs. But this is quite problematic because once we grind up the cannabis flower, the monetary of the, uh, value of the flower decreases by 50%. The reason is that the cannabis flower has many volatile molecules, such as terpenes and others, and they start coming out of the flower once we grind up the flower. Also, the trichomes can be destroyed, and then um, the protection of the cannabinoids is destroyed, and THC, for instance, can start degrading into CBN. So the shelf life of the cannabis goes down drastically. So this is quite problematic. If we try just to homogenize the plants and send them out like that, we're actually hurting the, fl we're hurting the flowers and we're, taking, we're changing the experience of the user. Another very, very big problem that potency testing and HPLC testing is facing today is repetability. So repetability is not achieved between the, the different labs. Probably most of you know that samples can be sent out to different labs and you can get different answers. So why is this happening? First of all, there's no universal standard for laboratory testing. This means that each lab has their own extraction method, their own HPLC method, different operators, and different equipment and instruments, which means different labs can give out different results. Another very big problem is that the labs don't like to share results with one another because of competition. And also because cannabis, for instance, in the United States, it's still illegal. So the labs do not want to share the results with one another. What you see here in the figure, is one flower which was homogenized and divided into five different samples and sent out to five different labs. You can see a huge difference between the five labs. For instance, green leaf lab shows that this flower has 13.9% THC. And a contrary, MRX lab says it's 23.9%. 
that means that the same flower gave a 10% difference between two different labs. So very problematic. Again, the users do not know what they're consuming, the growers do not know what they're growing, and the producers do not know what they're buying. Another very big problem in this industry and in the uh, lab industry and using HPLC is that some of the labs deliberately bump up the results in order to satisfy customers. So what you see here are five different labs and the THC content that they measured in the course of two years. Now let's look in red. In red, we can see one lab that has a markedly higher THC than all the other labs, markedly higher than the other labs. This means that this lab is intentionally bumping up its results. And this happens, and it happens a lot, and the labs do it in order to, 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 um, save, to um, have their competition, because the labs which give out higher results actually have more customers, and the labs need to get money, and they need paid customers. So if they give out higher results, they have more customers, which means that many times the lab can give out results like 30%, 31%, and these are incorrect. Most of the flowers do not reach such high content, but some of the labs have figured out how to save their customers, and they deliberately bump up their prices, uh, their um, THC or CBD content. Another issue in the cannabis uh, potency testing industry is that testing is currently costly, slow, and inconsistent. We talked about inconsistent, but let's talk about costly and slow. Well, a single test can cost between $80 and $300 for just one single test, which is quite problematic because if you'd like to send out many tests, this will cost the lab a lot of money. Also, testing is very slow. Not only is the process of testing slow, but the labs are booked up, and the popular labs are even more booked up, and this results in the fact that some of the growers can wait for maybe three weeks to a month in order to get results. Very problematic, because they grow, and they'd like to know what's going on and what they, they have grown, and they are waiting about a month to get their results. So some other disadvantages of using HBLC for potency testing. Well, first of all, we talked about the fact that the testing costs a lot of money. The reason for this is, first of all, that in order to do these testing, large and very expensive equipments but must be bought by the labs. HBLC or GC can cost anywhere between ten dollars to $100,000. Very, very expensive. Also, very um, uh, um, trained technician or analytical chemists need to be hired in order to do these to do these tests and in order to uh, uh, perform the tests and also interpret the tests. So also a lot of money. Another problem is that hazardous solvents and sample and, um, and disposables are used up in the process, which means it's very non-green. And also, as I said before, some of the labs take three weeks to a month to give uh, back samples. But just one sample in the lab itself can take anywhere between 30 minutes to 45 minutes just for one HPLC sample, which means that the labs don't do repeat. They, they could do, but they don't do much repeat testing because each test takes a long time. And as I said before, the biggest problem is that the sample is destroyed and that the same flower that was tested does not go back and is sold later. So um, we at GammaCert have been touring. We are, we are based in Israel, but we've been touring all over the world. We've been to Canada and the United States and Europe and all over, and we've talked to uh, all the players along the supply chains, and these are some quotes that we have gotten from uh, different players along the cannabis supply chain. So a California dispensary owner told us, how do I know the flower I bought are really worth the premium? I have no reliable means to validate potency on the spot. A cannabis grower told us, I'm tired of spending hundreds of dollars for potency testing. I need an in-house solution. And a medical cannabis user told us, I never know if the flower I buy are right for me. Sometimes they cause me anxiety and sometimes I can't fall asleep. So this is something we've heard a lot. We've heard many users that don't trust cannabis and try to use cannabis and have left uh, the, and are not using cannabis anymore because they, they open a bag and they consume one flower and what time it makes them feel very, very, very well. And the next time it doesn't work on them. And the last time, it, and the third time, it gives them anxiety attacks. So this is quite problematic because they don't trust the medicine and then the doctors don't trust the medicine and they don't want to use it anymore. So the industry has been looking for a different way um, to, to do potency testing, to go to maybe different ways to, that, that the industry can potency test on the spot. And um, so I would like to speak to you a little bit about what near spectroscopy is and how it's used in the cannabis business and exactly what we do. 
So what is near, near or near IR spectroscopy? So near IR or near infrared spectroscopy is a, is a spectroscopic form of testing. It uses light spectrum to assess the chemical content of a test subject. Simply, a near IR or near infrared light is shined upon your specimens, and the molecules inside absorb some of the light, and then the light that is absorbed out of the specimen is actually linear to the, uh, it gives us information and is linear to the concentration of molecules that we have inside the specimen. What's very good about this, uh, um, this method is it is non-destructive, and you can use the, uh, for instance, the flower or, or other specimens in its raw form. You don't have to grind it or do any extraction. And, um, it's a, and for this reason, high dollar crop in, the, in, in not even in the cannabis industry, but in other crop industry, use this technique for online testing. It's quite valuable. It's quite easy. And um, as I said, again, it's non-destructive. And also the pharmaceutical industry has also adopted near IR spectroscopy based solutions. So for this reason, much of the industry, much of the uh, food industry and the drug administration industry has turned to near IR. And this is something that we did not invent in, for many years in the industry. So one thing that's quite important to understand about near IR is when we're looking at one specific test and we, uh, we compare near IR to chromatography or to HPLC, near IR is not as precise as chromatography. And when we look at test to one test to one test, it will always be less accurate than HPLC. This is because near IR is estimation and HPLC is chromatography. Yet near IR is quite appropriate for many applications, especially for expensive crop, because we can test them and not, not destroy them. For this reason, the US Food and Drug Administration has approved near IR for medical procedures, pharmaceutical testing, and also for food testing. So near IR employs non-homogeneous crop analysis by averaging several results and multiple sampling on a sample. Since near IR test takes only about 60 seconds for a test rather than 30 to 45 minutes, we can use what is called the collate and average approach, which means we could take several tests on one specimen and then average them out. So if we have a specimen that is not homogeneous, we can actually take several, specimen, uh, several tests on one sample and average them out together. So a bit of advantages of near IR versus HPLC. So, um, Near-infrared spectroscopy um, testing requires only 60 seconds to just a few minutes. Near-IR uh, spectroscopy equipment can be operated by moderately trained technicians. Near-IR creates less overhead expenses. As I've said before, you don't need any sample preparation or to use any solvents or any plastics. Near-IR produces no hazardous waste solvents and requires no ongoing expense budget for consumable lab supplies. And near leaves the high-value cannabis samples intact. On the contrary, HPLC testing requires 30 to 45 minutes per test. HPLC must be operated um, by highly skilled and highly paid technicians. HPLC requires large overhead expenses. HPLC produces hazardous waste solvents and consumes disposable equipment. And as I've mentioned several times, HPLC des de uh, destroys the sample that's tested. So when we talk about financial consideration, of course, near IR has much of financial consideration over HPLC because no sample is destroyed, there's no use of solvents, and no skill to conditions are needed. So what are the drawbacks of near IR? So as I've said before, near IR is not as precise as chromatography. For any single test, HPLC is always going to be more accurate. But when we start analyzing batches and we like to test more than one sample, now uh, near IR can be uh, better and more accurate than HPLC. Can, we can test much more because we don't destroy anything and it takes much less time. Also, the, uh, one of the, one of the uh, facts about near IR is that the near IR does not work on its own. Near IR needs, in order to quantify uh, results uh, at potency, for instance, for cannabis, we must, we must work against a gold, a gold standard. Our gold standard here is the HPLC. So for qu chemical quantification to reach HPLC accuracy, multiple calibrations and correlations are needed. The greater the number of correlations against HPLC, the better the near IR results. Another problem with near IR is that near IR doesn't always penetrate into the sample. This actually risks the fact that we're actually measuring only the surface area, for instance, of the flower bud and not the inside of the flower bud. 
Uh, um, today, uh, there, in the market, there are several cannabis-specific near eye near our spectroscopy units in the market already, but they have no, they do not have sufficient correlation with HPLC, and they're not accurate for several reasons. First of all, they don't have a very extensive database. So as I said before, near IR must work against some sort of a gold standard. So we um, the near IR estimates according to what the HPLC results give you. So you can think of it as an uh, uh, as a graph with a y-axis. You get your you capture your near IR spectrum uh, your near IR spectrums. And then the X, in the X axis, you get your HPLC, your real reading. And you can, and um, using data science machine learning, you can make correlation line between the both. And the more the correlated is and the tighter your, uh, your line is, your accuracy gets much better. So also the, largest your data, the larger your database is, that also gives you more accurate results. So this is the problem with, um, uh, with cannabis specific units um, in the market today. Also, uh, all the uh, units that are in the market today ask you to sample prep or uh, grind up your flour or maybe take a small sample out of the flour. And this is quite problematic because cannabis not only is non-homogeneous, um, is not homogeneous when we look at different flowers from the same plant, but the flower itself is not homogeneous, which means that the active molecules in the flower bud itself are not evenly uh, um, um, dis dispersed on the flower, which means there are areas with higher THC and CBD markings, and there's areas with lower THC and CBD markings. And this is problematic because if we just use uh, near IR or we uh, take just a sample of the flower, we might get a different reading than what the average flower really gives out. So what you see here is some, uh, some analysis we did in the lab. Um, what you see here are a few flowers that we analyzed. We grinded up these flowers and we took different areas of the flower. We divided these flowers into three to five different specimens, uh, samples, uh, according to the size of the flower. And we ran them in HPLC and we looked at the cannabinoid, cannabinoid content of these flowers uh, for THC content and CBD content. You can see that they are very much spread out which means that we don't have the exact same content in every place along the flower. For instance, if we look here, we can see that um, uh, this same plant can be anywhere between 17 to 27% in the same flower. Okay, sorry, 19 to 27% THC in the same flower, which means different areas of the flower have different cannabinoid content. Quite problematic because when we, if we want to just use near IR and we point the near IR to different areas of the flower, we might get different results. Another analysis that we did in our lab is this visual analysis. Well, what we, what I wrote here is that all trichomes are not spread equal. Well, we know that 99% of the active material in cannabis are stored in these granular composites called trichomes, and these trichomes are not evenly uh, uh, spread along the cannabis flower. On the two, the two left uh, uh, pictures, you can see the uh, pictures of a flower of two different flowers, sorry, two different areas on the flower. And on the right, you can see uh, heat images of these flowers, which look at the trichome density along the flower. What you see in yellow and in green is high trichome density areas. And what you see in blue and in light blue is low trichome density areas, which means that the trichomes are not spread equal. So the THC, CBD, and all the active materials are not spread equal along the flower. So using near IR alone is quite problematic. For this reason, we have created the Gamma Cert, which is the optimal solution. And this is already, we are already selling um, our machine all over North America, Europe, and in Europe. This is how the machine looks. And it's operated um, using a smartphone with an application via Bluetooth, which connects to the, to, um, the Gamma Cert machine. So this is the first non-destructive, portable, and accurate cannabis analyzer. What's very uh, interesting about this machine is that you don't have to do any sample preparation and it's not destructive. The flower goes in as whole and comes back out as a whole flower. You don't have to do anything to it. You simply place it in, uh, activate the machine, and you get your, uh, your reading. These readings are quite reliable. It's real-time decision-making and fast and easy to use quite simple using an application on your phone and there's no uh, uh, and it's free of all toxic chemicals so how does the gamma cert work well the gamma cert employs three different technologies inside of it the first technology that i spoke to you about is the near infrared spectroscopy 
Okay, and as I said before, we use the Kaladin average approach, which means we take several spectrums or take several spectrum uh, uh, images of the flower. Second, we use com uh, computer vision algorithms, as I, sh as I showed you before this heat map. Inside the gamma cert, we also have a, a small RGB camera. The camera takes several images of the flower, and we do visual uh, analysis on the, on the flower. What do we do? First of all, we look at different trichrome density along the flower, and we can smartly tell the near IR where to sample from. Also, the camera is quite important because the distance of the near IR to the flower is very, very important, which means that if the near IR is too close to the flower or too far from the flower, we lose much of the information. So each time the distance has to be set, and this is locked uh, by, the, by the camera. Also, we want to make sure that the near IR, since this is a closed machine, we want to make sure that the near IR is always on the flower for uh, accurate reading. The last technology that's combined in our uh, machine is uh, uh, machine learning. So we use algorithms, as I've explained to you before. Um, we do algorithms to correlate between near IR spectroscopy and HPLC uh, readings. And we do uh, advanced uh, machine learning algorithms in order to get a plus minus 10% accuracy and to do this whole testing in one to three minutes. Another very important factor in the gamma cert machine is uh, what you see here on the top is this gold-plated reflector. This is quite important, this reflector. It sits in the back of the flower, and um, without it, you, you, don't, you lose much of the information. The, the way that it acts and the reason that it's so important is that the light beams to the flower, and the flower itself is not rock solid. It's got holes in it. It's sparse. So the light goes through the flower, which makes uh, and, and replicate and go and hits the uh, reflector in the back. So first of all, since the, uh, the light goes through the flower and the flower has holes inside, the near IR can see areas inside the flower and not just only on the surface area, which is one of the drawbacks of near IR. Also, when the light goes through the flower, it goes to the reflector. The reflector acts like a mirror. The light reflects on different areas on the reflector and then back onto the flower like a mirror and each um, in each uh, spectral analysis that we get from one point of the flower is not just a small little area on the flower, but rather a mix of different areas which replicated from the, uh, the reflector to the flower. Now we take several uh, spectra of one flower, which in each spectra is an average of several of different areas along the flower because the reflector acts like a mirror in the background. Also the reflector strongly amplifies our near IR signal. So simply how it works, I'd like to show you how simple it is. You simply have to slide in the reflector, as you see in image one. In image two, the reflector locks into the machine using a magnet on the side of the machine. Then you take out uh, a small pin, which is inside the machine. You can see it in uh, image four. On the top of the machine, there's a, a, a green circle, which is a metal, and, which, and the pin is connected to it. You simply put the flower, you uh, insert the flower into this pin, Take the pin with the flower, and in the top of the uh, of the draw of the drawer, there's a magnet. The metal green part of the pin uh, magnet, uh, magnets uh, into the magnet and sticks in. And then you just close the machine, activate it, and press analyze on the machine. Wait about three to four minutes, and you get your results. What we measure is total THC and total CBD. Just a small little explanation also about um, the calibration. So if you can see on image six, at the bottom of this container, at the bottom part of the, ref uh, below the reflector, there's a small little uh, 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 square in, that's uh, colored white. This is an ultimate uh, spectral on an ultimate white. When the machine starts uh, working, what happens is that the near IR first goes to this uh, uh, ultimate white and takes st several spectrums of this white. This all is done and goes up to our cloud where our database is stored and all the algorithms are stored. Now we know what the, um, what the exact reading of this white should be. And if we get incorrect readings, we can see this because we, we are always connected to our cloud. And then we get a warning, something went wrong. And also the user gets a warning, something went wrong. This way we know that if we don't get a warning that the near IR is fine and it's in tuned, and that, the near, and that the white is in place and that the near IR is working correctly. After that, the camera takes several images of the flower, tells the near IR where to sample from, but before that, the near IR goes to the flower, 
take several spectrum analysis of the flower in order to get to a, a specific spectrum, which doesn't move, which means we want to get to a specific temperature where all the spectrums are superimposed one on top of another. At this point, the, uh, the near IR spectrometer goes back down, self calibrates itself once more, goes back up to the flower, to, does the whole collate and average uh, uh, method, which means it takes several specimens on the, uh, uh, several spectrums, sorry, on the flower. All these spectrums are sent up to our cloud where we have a 4,000 flower database with our algorithms. The algorithms are done there, and then your answer goes right back down to your phone, and you get your total THC and your total CBD readings. Quite simple. You don't need any uh, uh, an analytical chemist or a trained technician to use it. You simply have a few buttons on your phone, and you press it. It takes three to four minutes with a plus minus 10% accuracy reading, which means that a 20% flower can come in anywhere between 18 to 22%. So just to sum up, over thousands of flowers and growing correlated with the HPLC results, the gamma cert has far suppressed the data point libraries of other cannabis-specific near-IR testers. It is the world's largest database of cannabis spectral images. Each multiple measurement gamma cert performs during a single test has industry-leading accuracy. Cloud-based software analyzes results to identify any outlaying data, which means that if you enter something that's not a cannabis flower, you would get an error. Okay, so you can't just put whatever you'd like inside, you would get an error reading. The software an analyzes its own analysis for constant improvements of accuracy. Then the test results of, and data is made available to the user via smartphone or laptop. And of course you can extrapolate it to Excel and work on the results and um, do whatever you would like with these results. You can also add, you have the option to add your variety or your strain, whatever you would like to uh, write about the specific flower that was tested. So by combining leading engineer IR methodology, visual image analysis, extensive data science, and machine learning, GammaCert provides a testing solution that's more than the sum of its parts. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Dr. Itali, for that informative presentation. I would also like to thank LabRoots for making today's educational webcast possible. And before we go, I want to let everyone know that this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through June of 2019. And as a final reminder, our speaker will follow up with any questions you've submitted via email. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.